This is a story you will never read in the lamestream media. A story that strikes at the very heart of the insane plan to abandon fossil fuels overnight and instead rely on electrifying everything. A story that makes all the ridiculous overhyped claims of being able to transition to a net zero economy quickly and easily look like fever dreams. A story that destroys the case for EVs over hybrids and existing internal combustion engine cars. Copper, one of the most commonly used metals for electrical conductors, not just for EVs but for batteries and energy storage systems, not to mention the 10 tonnes of copper needed for the generator windings in every single wind turbine, simply cannot be mined fast enough to keep up with the rocketing demands of the net zero transition. The figures are literally mind-blowing, as we'll see later in this video. Between now and 2050, we would have to mine more than all the copper that has ever been mined in human history. And that's just for business as usual. But don't think for one minute that this inconvenient truth will give the ignorant politicians who are driving this stuff any pause for thought. It won't. They'll keep plugging on with their bonkers net zero plans until they collapse into a heap, taking livelihoods and standards of living down with them. Fun times ahead. Welcome back to M Guy, British engineer and lawyer, now Sydney based YouTuber. Be sure to follow me on the usual socials for more content, links in the description, and there's a code on the screen. Scan that with your phone if you want to sign up for a weekly M Guy email. It'd be great to have you on board. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm won't be very kind to this video, so I'd be really grateful if you would share this video as far and wide as you can so that these kind of messages actually get traction with the public. The amounts of raw materials and elements required for a single EV battery are staggering. As a quick reminder, a lithium ion battery weighing about 1,000 pounds, 500 kilograms, typically requires about 25 pounds of lithium, 30 pounds of cobalt, 60 pounds of nickel, 110 pounds of graphite, 90 pounds of copper, about 400 pounds of steel, aluminium and plastics. By the time you account for the extremely low yield from the various ores and brines, which range from 10% for graphite down to 0.1% for lithium and cobalt, you need to mine about 90,000 pounds or 40 metric tons of ore and brine. And to get to that ore requires shifting another 500,000 pounds or 200 metric tons of topsoil to get at it. All of this mining will be fueled by oil and gas for the foreseeable future. And even if we're prepared to put up with that, some elements like copper simply cannot be mined fast enough to meet the demand for EVs, batteries and wind turbines. A new report has highlighted just how far the fantasy of net zero is from the physical reality of availability of elements. The amount of copper needed to build EVs is impossible for mining companies to produce. Copper cannot be mined quickly enough to keep up with current policies requiring the transition to electric vehicles, EVs, according to a University of Michigan study. Copper is fundamental to electricity generation, distribution and storage. According to global data, there are more than 709 copper mines in operation globally, with the largest being the Escondida mine in Chile, which produced an estimated 882,100 tonnes of copper in 2023. This may sound like a lot, but with electrification ramping up globally, it is not. The Michigan study, Copper Mining and Vehicle Electrification, has focused on the copper required just for the production of EVs over the coming years. Many countries across the world are putting forward policies for EVs. For instance, in the US, the Inflation Reduction Act, signed into law in 2022, calls for 100% of cars manufactured by 2035 to be electric. However, an EV requires three to five times more copper than petrol or diesel cars, not to mention the copper required for upgrades to the electricity grid. A normal Honda Accord needs about 40 pounds of copper. The same battery electric Honda Accord needs almost 200 pounds of copper, said Adam Simon, Professor of Earth and Environmental Studies at the University of Michigan. We show in the paper that the amount of copper needed is essentially impossible for mining companies to produce. The researchers examined 120 years of global data from copper production dating back to 1900. They then modelled how much copper is likely to be produced for the rest of the century and how much copper the US electricity infrastructure and fleet of cars would need to upgrade to renewable energy. 
The study found that renewable energy's copper needs would outstrip what copper mines can produce at the current rate. Between 2018 and 2050, the world will need to mine 115% more copper than has been mined in all of human history up until 2018, just to meet current copper needs without considering the green energy transition. To meet the copper needs of electrifying the global vehicle fleet, as many as six new large copper mines must be brought online annually over the next several decades. About 40% of the production from new mines will be required for EV-related grid upgrades. Given that it can take up to 20 years to open a new copper mine, six a year for the next several decades is not just difficult, but completely impossible. There are other similar calculations that have been done in relation to the amount of battery energy storage required to completely remove dependence on fossil fuels, i.e. massive battery banks to deal with the lack of solar and wind energy when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing. The figures are comical. One suggested that you'd need over 13,000 years of production of lithium at today's rate to mine enough to put in place just 28 days of battery energy storage. All by 2050. Yeah, good luck with that. More on this in a future video. But the key sentence from this article just sums up the conflict between net zero fantasy and reality. We're hoping this study gets picked up by policymakers who should consider copper as the limiting factor for the energy transition and to think about how copper is allocated. I can tell you one thing. The policymakers are deaf to rational arguments like this. They are on a collision course with reality. And when that collision eventually comes, as it certainly must, the ones to suffer won't be the policymakers themselves, living in their ivory towers, insulated from real life, but the ordinary people like us, who will have to suffer decades of unaffordable energy prices together with endless falling living standards and prosperity. All thanks to the mindless pursuit of net zero. The first political parties to pledge to abandon this madness would win their elections in a landslide.